So let's take a look at this mission and what do we know about it. So mission six, pleasure boating the West Wall. January 1945, the U.S. Army has reached the German fortified line called the West Wall. Near the German town of Trier, a cluster of bunkers are holding up the U.S. advance. Repeated attacks and B-17 bombings have failed to destroy the bunkers. Your squad has been volunteered for a dangerous mission. Approach the West Wall by canoe at night and take out the bunkers. So they recommend buying equipment for your squad and tell us that we will get four canoes and four satchel charges for free. And our members, our soldiers will be entering the map in hex H1, which is right here at the end of the river, boating down the river here. And the river can only be crossed by an intact bridge or canoe. So there is a bridge here. Um, and then they give a lot of rules here for the river and so forth. So let me just see the highlights. Is uh, This mission is occurring at night. Visibility is only five hexes for the duration of the mission. Canoes. We have four canoes, each which can carry two soldiers. Each canoe can also carry two uh, port boxes of equipment. You can take three soldiers in a canoe instead of equipment. And let's see. And if you have bazookas, medium machine guns, or satchel charges, they must go into the canoe's two port boxes. And the canoes move one hex at a time during operations. Paragraph checks are made as normal. During rounds, each canoe has a movement point allowance of four and moves using the actions in rule 6 slash 7, such as move slash snap fire or move. You can move both directions on the river. Must be manned by two active U.S. soldiers in order to move. It can move only once per turn, even if both soldiers receive actions. Canoe moves when one of its soldiers receives a turn. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, canoes can turn at no cause, can beach for a cost of one movement point during actions. And so I'm not going to read all the details here. This is another important part. The Germans have an unknown number of hidden bunkers that you must find and knock out. Each bunker faces all six hex sides and has a door on one side. So the bunker looks like this. And in fact, I've got a picture here that shows the bunker facing... Uh, in the door. Um, so, so the bunker has has uh, windows on all of the sides, which is interesting. So they can shoot in every direction, including through the door. Must have a firing port in the door. And when firing a bunker, you can aim at a soldier visible through the aperture, or you can try to fire at the bunker itself. I suppose, for example, if you were firing a bazooka. And then there's some rules for what happens if we hit the bunker. Victory. We need 12 victory points to win. We receive vi 6 victory points for each bunker you knock out. You also receive victory points for incapacitating Germans. You lose victory points for incapacitating and killing of U.S. soldiers. Victory point loss can be avoided if you take your incapacitated soldiers off the north map edge. You can exit by canoe if you wish. If you carry him out by canoe, you do not roll for his death for each hex you drag him as you normally would on foot. Mission ends the instant there are no active U.S. soldiers on the map. Okay, so the board has been set up for the scenario. And as you can see, uh, first of all we have some craters, some shell craters, where bombs have hit. And you can see also that that building has basically been turned into rubble by the B-17 bombing. And up here... At the northern end of the map, you can see my four canoes, and we have uh, Davis and Chang, no, I'm sorry, Davis and Eaton in the first canoe, and in the second canoe, we have Anderson and Hen um, Anderson and Fortson, and the third canoe, we have Bastinelli and Chang, and the last canoe, we have Gopher and Henderson. Um, now one thing that I'll just mention that I didn't talk about earlier is that the commanders, Anderson and Bastinelli, A and B, uh, have a command radius. Uh, so basically anybody within two hexes of them 
they can uh, aid them by uh, giving them some uh, a chance to move when it would normally be the commander's turn, for example. So that's why the commanders are sort of spread out. Uh, so my general plan is that I'm going to go ahead and enter in the canoes as indicated uh, as the required starting thing. And I thought about having some guys immediately beach a canoe and proceed through the forest or on this side of the forest or over here through the plains, maybe try to get over here. But, uh, and that's a, still an, a possibility I may consider as I st get going. But uh, the one thing I do note that is that by being here, uh, at least nobody over here will be able to see me through this forest. And also, I have no idea where on this map these pillboxes may be. So that uh, makes it a little more difficult for me. I, if I start, for example, on the wrong side of the river and they're all over here, then they'll have to be able to use their canoes to get across the river. Um, well, of course, I suppose the other option is, is they could, uh, if they snuck over here, they could try to make their way across the bridge. I do have to be concerned that the, uh, that the bridge could, you know, be very well guarded, for example. That would seem to be a pretty smart move for the Germans. So, and, uh, you know, you can see from the hill here, you have a great line of fire all the way down this road, so it might be somewhat suicidal for my men to try to cross this road. Actually, the one thing in my favor, though, is it's night. So I only have... They can only see me from a range of five. So I probably could cross over this end fairly safely if I wanted to get over into this area. Uh, finally, let's take a look at my men and the equipment that I bought. So <laughs> this game makes me really challenged by the number of points of weapons versus what I would like to do. So Anderson's equipped with a Thompson submachine gun and he's got three uh, uh, reloads for that. Machine gun, submachine gun tends to run out of ammunition frequently. And Bastinelli here, he's got the squad Browning automatic rifle, which is basically the the light machine gun of the American forces in World War II. Uh, and he's got three reloads for that. Then we have Cheng carrying an M1 rifle and a bazooka. We've got two rounds of ammunition for the bazooka. I really wish I had more. Uh, we have Davis here with an M1 and a satchel charge, uh, M1 rifle. Eaton with a rifle, satchel charge, and a grenade. Fortson, rifle, satchel charge, a grenade, and one extra reload for the rifle. Then Gopher just has his rifle, and Henderson has a rifle and a satchel charge and a grenade. I tried to give the grenades to the men with the better weapon skill since that also affects their ability to throw things. So we are now ready to start. All right, then, let's start the game and see what happens. So Davis and Eaton move their canoe onto H1. And we check the sleeve here and we've lined it up so that H and 1 are lined up and we can see the event is none. So now we move to J or I2, excuse me. And we look at I2 and it's also none. We'll move on these guys because if we encounter anything, I want these guys to be within two spaces of the commander. So now we're going to move on to I3. And the... oh, we have something. So under I, with I3 lined up, we show S7561. So we have a possible sighting. And what we do is uh, read the paragraph and mark the sighting on the squad card if the paragraph is preceded by an S. So we look in our paragraph book at 561. Okay, so we pull up the paragraph book, go to 561, try not to read other things we're not interested in, and it says 561. Place an event marker. Conduct a perception check at a minus one. If successful, see 702. 
So it sounds like there's a possibility we may have seen something. And the event marker is there to let us know that we've done this once already, so that we will not do checks in that square again, no matter who moves there. So we're conducting a perception check, and we have D, we have Davis, who has a perception of 2, and Eaton has a perception of 6. Uh, the minus one go means it's going to be a little bit more difficult than normal to uh, conduct this check. So we'll roll these dice. Davis is going to be the black dice. He's got the better chance. So he, instead of a six, he's going to need a five to be successful. He is successful. He gets a three. Eaton uh, was unsuccessful. So it said, if we were successful... C702. 702 says S7. So sighting 7 has happened. Hex E6 contains a wrecked Sherman tank. Place landmark. Okay, so we're looking for a, a wrecked tank. And uh, I'll have to dig around and find that. And then I'll place the landmark here.